Hi, I'm Michael Pfeiffer, Principal Consultant and Trainer at Industrial Metallurgists. In this video, I'm going to explain about residual stresses in metals. So residual stresses in metals are locked in elastic stresses. Elastic stresses refer to um, atoms in a metal that are they're stretching their atomic bonds, but there's no deformation associated or there's no permanent deformation associated with the stress. So it's only elastic stress. Um, elastic stress is non-permanent deformation of a metal. The diagram on the left and on the right illustrate the, the, the concept of, of, of residual stresses. In the diagram on the left, uh, it shows the atoms in a metal. And we see that the, the top row of atoms, the, 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 the atoms are elongated in the, in the horizontal direction. And that they are, they are, the, the bonds between the atoms are stretched compared to the atoms below. And then the bottom, in the bottom row of atoms, the atoms are contracted in the, in the horizontal direction. So the, there's, um, the, the bonds are, are, the atomic bonds between the atoms have shrunk. So what, what this is showing is that the, the atoms in the top want to expand uh, horizontally and the atoms in the bottom row want to contract horizontally. But in a metal, the atoms, both in the top row and the bottom row, will be constrained by the rest of the metal. And the result of that constraining will be to put the, the top atoms in, in, in a compressive residual stress and the bottom row of atoms in tensile residual stress. So we see here in the, in the right-hand image, the, the atoms in the top row, they, they want to try to expand, but they're constrained from expanding by the, by the, by the uh, neighboring metal, metal atoms. And as a result, the atoms in the top row are under a compressive residual stress. And at the same time, the atoms below are, all, are in compressive tensile stress because the atoms above are trying to cause these atoms to, to grow out. And for the bottom set of atoms, the atoms are constrained from contracting in a horizontal direction. And as a result, uh, they are under a tensile residual stress. Their bond, the, the, the length of the bonds between the atoms is longer than the atoms want to have in the bottom row. And also, the atoms in the row above will, will be in compressive residual stress because they are, um, they are being acted on by the elastic stresses in the bottom row. So residual stresses are locked in elastic stress. They have one region that's constrained by an adjacent region from expanding or contracting elastically. And the residual stresses can be tensile or compressive. And in some metals, we have both tensile and compressive uh, residual stresses present at the same time. There are a few different effects of residual stress. Um, one is it can have component distortion during machining as layers of the metal are being machined away that exposes material that has different elastic stresses on it. And as a result, the metal can distort during machining by changing the stress state of the metal. Um, also unpredictable spring back during bending and forming operations that will result in, in metals not having the, the desired shape. Also, if there are tensile residual stresses at the surface of a metal, that can, that, will re, that can reduce the metal's fatigue life and contribute to stress corrosion cracking. Alternatively, um, surface residual compressive stresses are generally helpful for, um, for um, improving fatigue life and improving resistance to stress corrosion cracking. And it also re reduces the effects of applied tensile stresses that, that, can, that can cause fatigue and stress corrosion cracking. There are a few different causes of residual stress. Uh, mechanical deformation of a metal, uh, temperature variations of a metal during heating and cooling, phase transformations that occur in metals during heat treating, and surface treatment. And I'll explain about uh, these, four different, um, these four different causes of residual stress. So first I'll explain about mechanical deformation and mechanical treatment. So when a piece of metal is, is deformed, let's say during metal component fabrication, uh, forging or stamping or other bending processes, um, stress is applied to the metal and it causes permanent deformation of the metal. When, when the stress is removed from the metal, the permanent deformation remains, but the, there is a portion of the stress, of, of, of the deformation that is associated with elastic deformation that is re reversible deformation of the metal. So when the stress is removed from the metal, the elastic stresses, the elastic portion of the deformation tries to relax to push the metal back towards its original shape. And that's where, that's where uh, residual stresses can arise. So let's look at this example of a metal bar that's being bent. 
So during bending, the outer portion of the bend is in tension and the inner portion is in compression. When the forces are released from the metal, the, the metal tries to relax and tries to, the elastic deform, the component of deformation tries to go to zero. And so the, that causes the bar to unbend, try to unbend a little bit. Um, and if, when the elastic stresses are unable to, um, to, to go back to zero, then that will put the material in, have a result in residual compression or residual tension. So at the outer portion of the bend, the metal is trying to unbend and, but the metal is being forced to stay in, in, in this bend. And so as a result, the metal at the outer portion of the bend is in under uh, residual uh, compression. And the opposite is true here at the, the material is in residual tension after the load is removed. Then with temperature variations during heating or cooling, um, I'm gonna talk about uh, during, during cooling. So during cooling, the material in the out of the outer portion of the metal um, uh, cools and as it cools, it, it, it contracts. And, and then it, it, get, it, it, it establishes its shape in, in the cooled condition. Then as more material starts to cool, it will also try to contract. Um, so this contracting outer material has pushed down and squeezed against the still cooling inner material. So as the cooling inner material cools, it's trying to contract also, but now it's contracting against the outer portion of the metal. And as a result, this push, this cooling inner metal push, puts the outer layer of metal in compression as the inner metal tries to cool and contract and contract against the outer layer of metal. So when there are temperature variations during heating or cooling, the temperature variations meaning that you have portions of the metal cooling faster than other portions. So in this case, we have the outer portion cooling faster than the inner portion of the metal. Then there can also be phase transformations during heat treating. Um, this would occur, let's say, during with, with steels, with the quenching, uh, with a through hardening process such as quenching or os tempering or mar tempering. And with aluminum alloys, when we do aging heat treatments on them, and other alloys would go through certain heat treatments. When go, the metals go through these heat treatments, there are changes in the phases present in the metal, and the phases can have different volumes. So one phase changing to another phase can result in a volume change in the metal, and those volume changes can result in changes uh, in residual stresses within the metal. So in the, in the case where we have one phase in a metal, changing to a metal that takes up a higher volume, then we, we can have tensile stresses resulting in the, in, in the outer portion of the metal. Um, or I should say tensile residual stresses. So in this case, the outer layer of the metal cools and it transforms from one phase to the other and the metal grows. Now it, it grows and it takes its shape. Now it's, it's also, as it's cooling, it's also contracting and it contracts against the inner layer. Now, as the inner layer of metal starts to transform from the, from the smaller volume phase to the larger volume phase, it is trying to, to expand. And it's trying to expand against the already transformed outer layer of metal. And it, this metal is constrained by the outer layer of metals. And it also puts the outer layer of metal in, in, in tensile residual stress because this inner layer is pushing out against the outer layer of metal. So this results, the phase transformation where we have a phase that has a certain volume, takes up a certain volume, changes to a larger volume, there will be tensile residual stresses in the metal when the, when the, when the process is completed. And then finally, there's, during surface treatment, there can be differences in the, um, uh, differences in, in, between the atomic arrangement between the substrate and the metal being deposited will result in in um, uh, elastic stresses at the interface between the coating and the, the substrate, and that will result in tensile or compression uh, at the boundary. And it depends on the, the, whether it's tensile or compression, depends on the coating and the substrate. And sometimes the stresses are large enough that it causes the coating to, to crack or de-adhere. There are a few ways of measuring residual stress. Two common ways are shown here. First is using stress relaxation techniques that uses electric and mechanical strain gauges. These strain gauges are attached to the metal and the metal is 
metal is, is drilled away and in successive amounts. And as the metal is drilled away, the the um, the residual stress of the of the metal is 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 uh, is evaluated. Also, there is um, X-ray diffraction is also used. It's used to measure the the um, the amount of 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 bending of, of atomic planes or distortion of atomic planes, and that information can be used to determine the amount of residual stress in a metal. There are a number of ways to control residual stress to to reduce it or to at least minimize it. First, through mechanical treatment, we can use shot peening, light cold rolling, stretching, and small amount of compressing compressing to cause compressive uh, residual stresses at the surface that will help improve uh, fatigue resistance and resistance to stress corrosion cracking. Also, stress relief heat treatment is used. The yield strength of a metal decreases as its temperature increases. So when there are residual stresses present in the metal, if the metal is heated to a high enough temperature where the, where the strength of the metal decreases below the elastic residual stresses in the metal, then the residual stresses can, can actually deform the metal and they are, the residual stresses are relieved. And the higher the temperature of the metal, the more the residual stresses in the metal are relieved. Um, so it's, it, this involves microscopic plastic deformation of the metal at the elevated temperature. Um, a, a process called vibratory stress relieving involves vibrating a, a metal at certain frequencies, at specific frequencies, in order to relieve um, elastic stresses. Then there's also controlling heat treating processes, which means using slower cooling rates from elevated temperatures to allow a metal to cool more uniformly, or when there are phase transformations occurring, to allow them to occur at the same time throughout, uh, throughout, throughout a piece of metal. And then also through alloy selection, when we're going to be heat treating metals, let's say for strengthening, we can select alloys that that, that are that, that enable using slower cooling rates during the strengthening heat treatments, and the slower cooling rate allows for um, more uniform temperatures throughout the component, less temperature variations, or less temperature uh, non-uniformity, and as a result, less um, uh, less uh, residual stress in the metal. So to wrap up, residual stresses in components and joints is, is very is common, um, and there are several design and processing options that exist for minimizing and reducing residual stress in a metal. Um, if you liked this this short video, please subscribe to our channel. Go to the Industrial Metallurgist website on YouTube and click the subscribe button and subscribe. And if you're interested in learning more, consider our courses. We have a lot of metallurgy courses that are on-demand courses designed. They are designed for design engineers, manufacturer engineers, and quality engineers, and also people in uh, sourcing have taken our courses. And then we also offer short webinars and information about them as here at our Speedy Webinars page of our website. And finally, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to call or email. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your medals. Bye.